Hospital of Portland's pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Panmo TV. Um, now, before I begin, I've got a new hat here. I'm just going to put on. It's sort of like... It's actually a bit small. But this was actually given to me by Sophie the Portless poet and, and her partner um, as a Christmas present. And it's a little bit tight. And I think it, I don't think, I think it may be my fault. Because it's maybe something I did when I was washing it. But I'm just going to, I'm just going to wear it anyway, just... As a, because I really like them and they're great people, and I want to just sort of uh, thank them for what they've done for me, which is really so much. As you know, if you watch regularly, and um, you watch my various um, updates where I I go through the things that the Sophie the Port's poet and her partner have actually done. Um, okay, so this is another Steve mumbling video. I haven't done one of those for a couple of weeks because I've just been so busy with other things. As you know, if you watch regularly, I've been either speaking at places or I've had to deal with problems, etc., etc. So um, I want to get back into this, into my stride as quickly as possible. So this is why I'm doing these particular videos. Now, Steve has made <coughs> a couple of videos about a subject which is um, very close to my heart, as you know, and that is the disclosure issue. <coughs> now, he's made several videos. One of them was um, He's made, he's made one of them quite a long time ago. Hang on, yeah, no, no, they're both quite recent actually. Sorry, mis I read, misread the date. One of them was in just after New Year, and another one was just last week. So we'll go with the earliest one first, and it's another of his driving ones where he's going along. He's uh, driving along in his uh, fancy Holden two-seater, and um, there's the Australian outback flowing past the windows. You, if you go to his channel, just check the links in the description box. And you'll see the videos I'm talking about. And um, you can go to his channel and watch all his videos. And I do recommend that, actually. As I've always said, you know, you can learn you can learn a lot more from watching people you don't agree with as you can from watching people you do. So, here we go. Um, I'm not, and I should point out that uh, my lack of my Australian hat is not, um, is not in any way connected. It's not meant to be an insult to Steve. I don't see tight. Is these things tight around my neck? I don't know. But, um, anyway... <coughs> So, let us begin with the first of Steve's video. This was 3rd of January. It's called UFO ET Disclosure 2018. I haven't made one of those yet, have I? Here we go. I should do, shouldn't I? <clears throat> okay, well, let's, uh, let's think about disclosure for a minute. I thought about very little else for the last few years, Steve. Um... I'm sorry if the sat nav's in the way, but I thought that the view out of the windscreen might be better than, than the view of, uh, of, me, of me today. Oh, Steve, how can you say that? I just love watching your beautiful face. Oh, well. Um, now, yeah, it's the, the this disclosure issue. As you know, it is something that, uh, that is, affects me deeply, and it's something which I'm not, I'm not even in one mind over. I've got several different um, conflicting ideas going through my head about disclosure well <coughs> but just to define what disclosure is if well I think Steve might be about to <coughs> but st st disclosure i.e. what I I call it willing disclosure well there's different kinds of disclosure I use the term willing disclosure to refer to what is commonly known as disclosure and it is the frank acknowledgement by the authorities in this world uh, that is by the state and by corporate power that there is an extraterrestrial impre extraterrestrial presence engaging the human race Okay, that's it. That's all it is. It's just they coming clean, frankly, and admitting it because they know this is the case. They have decisive evidence that proves this is the case, and it has been classified at a very high level. And a lot of what people, such as Dr. Stephen Greer and Stephen Bassett, and a lot of other people who featured on this channel, do, is they campaign for that disclosure. So let's uh, continue. So uh, <coughs> you know, you see these people. Steve Bassett's one of them, you know. <laughs> he took the words right out of my mouth, Steve. 2015 is going to be the year of disclosure. I did think it would be, no. I, I mean, 
it was very, a bit disappointing actually, if you, as you remember, if you watch regularly, that when I got to the end of 2015, so just my makeshift tripod here, when I got to the end of 2015, and um, we didn't have it, because <coughs> I'm in two minds about the whole thing anyway. Um, I don't need to, maybe I'll go into that later. Let's, ca let's see if carry on. And of course it comes and goes. 2016 is going to be the year of disclosure and it comes and goes. 2017 is going to be the year of disclosure and 2017 is gone. That's an oversimplification. I think what you're saying, Steve, is basically every disclosure was something that's about to happen sometime within the coming year. <clears throat> now, there's an element, there is an element of hubris in the exopolitical world, which is real, and I know, I kind of know what you mean in a way, but because I, of, at a superficial glance, it does look that way. I first saw Stephen Bassett, I, I first encountered Stephen Bassett, actually, when I saw him live on stage in Liverpool in 2000 and 2009. That's that long ago, eight years. And nine years almost, nine years, yeah. And um, he was saying that basically with the election of President Obama, Obama was going to be the disclosure president. He said, this was like in the middle of, this was like in summertime. And he said, basically, we'll have disclosure by Christmas. He was that sure. Unfortunately, he was as wrong as the people who said uh, the war would be over by Christmas. <laughs> and when they had five more years of blowing the hell out of each other and gassing each other and stuff like that. Okay, so, uh, so I know what you mean, Steve. <coughs> I understand your position, and it is frustrating. But it is an over oversimplification. There are distinct reasons why various waves of disclosures come and go. And I have been tracing these different trends. In fact, I'm overdue for another UFO disclosure video, actually, because I think I should say something about it at some point. Because I did a whole load of 2015, 2016, 2017 videos. Well, I slowed down after 2016 because I did sort of like feel the window of opportunity had closed. I'll let Steve carry on. Now, 2018 has got to be the year of disclosure. I don't th think it will be. I mean, I hope I'm wrong, because yeah, I'd love to be wrong. I kept saying 2015 would be the year of disclosure, and it wasn't. So maybe if, if 2018, if I say 2018 is not going to be the year of disclosure, then it will be. Bit of reverse magic there. Yeah, well, it's... um. And, and now we find out, of course, that the Pentagon didn't release anything. The, uh, the gun camera... Uh, footage, the infrared gun camera footage from the um, F-18s, whatever, whatever they were, were uh, was actually released by that guy as an individual. So it's got nothing more to do. All right, now you've done an entire video on the the, the gun camera footage from the U.S. Navy. This is to do with the uh, the stuff that was going on just before Christmas with the with the um, the, the big release, the the Tic Tac footage, which I think I've, t I've talked about on previous videos, <coughs> and um, yeah. Uh, that is um no the, the individual like um i haven't watched your entire video there but so i'm not i may not be entirely sure what you mean i haven't got around to that one yet maybe i'll cover it in this video for that time but <sighs> individuals releasing something uh in terms of state secrecy um is not well, firstly, if you're an individual and you are within an institution which involves secrecy, even if it's something like me involved in the NHS, you are bound by certain confidentiality diktats. So, basically, I, at my hospital, if I any information I found out about patients, for example, or anything, anything can related to certain institutions of the hospital, I couldn't go out and tell people. If I did, I'd be in serious trouble. And if you in other government services, it's even more strict. Uh, for example, in in the in the MI5, for example, you can't go around revealing official state secrets. These are classified higher even than um, the ones at the NHS, and you can face prison or you know, even worse if you reveal these. So the the fact that an individual, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't watched the video you're talking about yet. The fact that an individual was the one who said it doesn't make any difference. I think you may be referring to Luis Elizondo, because <coughs> he was the one on that particular um, news program, the one with Cheryl Costa and Leslie Kane, which is what triggered, which was what triggered the whole thing off. The fact that he, his position, he was an official at the Pentagon, 
and um, that he was speaking about this means that he must have had permission to speak about these things. Otherwise, he'd be in hiding right now, scared for his life. Or at very, at the very worst, at best, he'd be facing years of his life in jail, and uh, and um, devastation. His, his life devastated. So, the fact that he came forward means that he must have done it with sanction from whoever was keeping these secrets. Okay, now um, I'll, I'll watch. Maybe I'll watch the, that video actually. When I'll watch that video as well when I finish this one. These two that I've got in front of me. Whatsoever to do with official disclosure. Uh, but yes, it did, as I've just explained. Sorry, maybe I interrupted you too early, Steve. I don't think there will ever be disclosure. Do you know what, Steve? Part of me agrees with you. I don't think there will ever be... Well, a part of me believes... I don't believe... Oh, I'm, just, I'm just going to fill up myself... I'm just going to fill myself up with dragon juice. But I, it's a part of me that also does not believe that we will ever have willing disclosure. I really don't. There's a part of me that, as I've explained on previous videos, I think it's impossible. Do you know what I mean? You, you, what, I'm, what, you, what I'm saying is, <coughs> you, disclosure involves the government coming forward and revealing what is more secret, more secret than the H-bomb. The fact that we are not alone, and the universe is teeming with life, and they've known about it for close to a century at least. Now this is um, this is a long, complicated issue, which I, I've talked about in detail in other other videos. Please, there's a link in the description box to my, to my last, <coughs> the, my most recent, which I say recent, it was almost a year ago, UFO disclosure video. It's, that is dedicated UFO disclosure video. I've got a whole series of these videos now. I've got a, several dozen. Um, it's it's the re the revelation that we are not alone. Well, for whatever reason. The government don't want us to know that. They want us to believe that we're we are alone with this little um, oasis of life in an infinite cosmic desert of carbon compounds and noble gases and vacuum and nuclear fusion, and then that's all. Okay, that's what they want us to. Uh, that's what they want us to believe. Now, for whatever reason, it is that that position, that that worldview, that this deception is inimical to their control over us in terms of the Illuminati and what they have planned for us and their minions in the various what we call governments <coughs> which in fact just public relations departments now um, so they so they, in order for them to admit otherwise means that they are compromising that particular that particular position and it's obviously a position that they're quite unanimous about because it's one they've held for a long time without any wavering so they'd have to go back on a policy that they have, um, they've had in place almost since the beginning. Now, do read. Um, all right, I'm, this is a shameless plug. Read my books, Roswell Rising: A Novel of Disclosure. Roswell Revealed: The World After Disclosure. These are fictional allegories for all, and I put in all these points that I'm talking about here. And I, it's basically a thought experiment of this entire concept. My my novels. So please do read my books. Um, I'll sign them for you at some point as well, and I'll be worth a lot of money in a few years. <clears throat> and what will also, it's, that's, that's part of the problem. The other problem is to do with the fact that you know, it's connected to the free energy issue, which I believe I, I've, uh, I've covered before on, on my replies to Steve. Uh, basically, there is free energy, it does exist, and it's, it's intimately, intimately connected to the UFO issue because the things such as Roswell, I'm going, back, I'm going back through my various videos I've replied to Steve about. Uh, the Roswell incident was the a crash retrieval. It was the salvaging, the covert salvaging of an extraterrestrial artifact that crashed to the Earth's surface and subsequent cover up, which has lasted to the present day. Ro the Roswell incident from 1947 is just one of many events like that. There's, there's been at least one in Britain, which I've also researched. Now um, they'd have to also. Um, what happens is they probably they've almost certainly worked out that these extraterrestrial artifacts, these craft, are have a power plant and propulsion system which uses this kind of three free energy. Okay, and um, that uh, basically they've kept it from us. They've kept this information from us. They've kept it secret from us. Now, um, not only is the, the free energy issue is, is also something which is inimical to 
the, the, the Illuminati control of the world. They're going to have to like do away with that. It's another policy they're very unanimous about. But also they're going to have to explain to us why they kept it quiet for all these years. When you think how many lives could have been saved, how many people could have been prevented from living lives of poverty and, and, and death and environmental destruction and things like that. And I cover that in detail in, in those videos. I'll let Steve carry on. So, so well, basically what I'm saying is I, I actually think I agree with you, Steve, when you say there won't be UFO disclosure. But I agree with you for a different reason. Until there is no choice. You know, on the day that an alien spacecraft lands you know, on the White House lawn, or, you know, in a public area somewhere, uh, and uh, you've got all the media there, you know, for the, just like the science fiction films, when the ramp, when the little door opens and a ramp comes down and the little alien walks down the steps. Uh, until that day, there will never be disclosure. Whilst they have a choice, if they can deny it, or they can say, well, yeah, okay, we're looking into it, it's an interesting phenomenon. And that's a word that they're very keen on using. They're, they're, they're trying to get away from the term UFO to uh, unidentified. You know, it's funny, I, I think I... Steve and I agree on this more than I suspected, actually, before... Because I haven't pre-watched this video. I've, I've decided just to watch them with a tabula rasa in my head. But um, Steve's actually right here. I mean, well, he's, he may not be completely right, but he's got a point here. Um, the extraterrestrials, presumably, are in some way complicit with this truth embargo as Bassett calls it they are going along with it they could they could blow it themselves at any point they wanted but for some reason they're not and I don't know why not and maybe it's not a good idea to speculate when you're dealing with an extraterrestrial intelligence because it's tempting to anthropomorphize that is to put yourselves in the shoes of the aliens which you can't really do even if they do have two feet because it's you can't necessarily think you'll ever there'll ever be a meeting of minds because their psychology is going to be so different because well other people are hard enough to understand I mean look at Marie Kay on video the other day I don't understand why people behave in such a destructive manner so I have trouble understanding fellow members of my own species but look at dogs and cats I mean how often do dogs and cats do things when you go why is that why is that dog doing that why is that cat growl hissing at thin air why is that dog growling at something um, you don't know. They know. They're, they're dogs and cats. We don't because we're human. We do an awful lot of things that a dog or a cat could not comprehend. A large number of things. Um, you know, you could, you can't, you can never ever explain to a dog how to take a physiology class or to direct a light opera. But humans do that. So we may be in that kind of situation with the extraterrestrials. Their behaviour is spurious. It is completely spurious. It is not only you know, not comprehended, it is not comprehensible. And that is, I'm actually, I'm actually going to go into that in Cambridge. If you can get to the East Anglia UFO conference on Monday, actually, the East Anglia UFO um, event on Monday, <laughs> and this is a plug for that, um, I'm actually going to be speaking about this, and I spoke about this at AwakeCon, so... Um, um, yeah, so why, why are the aliens not just landing on the White House lawn? I don't know. I wish they would. Aerial phenomena. Not that it makes any difference. We all know what they're talking about. It's an unidentified object that um, you know you can track on radar, is seen by people, and um, uh, exhibits um, operational capabilities beyond what we can do here. So yeah. that's that, that's what we're talking about. And. Uh, I must say, I'm glad you're not so close-minded, Steve, as, as to just dismiss them in the same way a lot of other sceptics do. Oh, they're just weather balloons, they're just, they're just swamp gas, etc. You know, you do realise there is a real phenomena here. I think you do, anyway. Because of these things obviously are around, nobody knows what they are, and that's what they say. They say, we don't know that they're alien spacecraft. My personal opinion is, <coughs> they, they may say, my personal opinion is, I don't think they're built here. I don't think anybody here is capable of building this device. And that's what they... Well, they're, they're, a, back, they're a back engineered craft, which are based on... Some of it's not based on extraterrestrial artefacts, but they're based on human. They're, they're based on our own designs for free energy and anti-gravity. Um, but a lot of it is a lot of it also comes, I believe, from um, extraterrestrials, extraterrestrial technology. 
but humans have apparently i mean bob lazar talks a bit about this and he you know there's other people who've backed him up on this like john lear that they have actually captured craft and they're actually working to back engineer them and um they are um they can fly these things so there are the humans are building aircraft based on extraterrestrial technology um um so yeah so we could we can build something like that obviously i don't think we could build anything as good as what they do i mean if you, if you dropped for instance say um, a mobile phone into the hands of isaac newton from the 21st century he'd look at it and he'd wonder what the hell it was but he, he'd be a scientist his first in, in his first instinct would be to open it up look at what was inside it and think well what's that well, maybe not newton maybe f faraday or one of these other people who worked in electricity they would wouldn't take them long to work out as some kind of a, it was considered of electrical circuits very small very very small and sophisticated and subtle ones but they were electrical circuits given time they may be able to build a fax a very very crude facsimile using copper wire which would probably be the size of a house and something like that they so scientists from the sort of from the 18th century would probably be able to given enough time and given their expertise may be able to back engineer an iphone to a certain extent like i said it would, be, it would probably be something made of copper wires it would be the size of a house you know it'd be a facsimile of the electrical circuits within these within the the chips within the the chips within the phone the microchips however you couldn't make a call on it and you couldn't get the app for where the nearest pizza parlor is do you see what I mean? It would be a, it's a crude copy. And this is, looks like this is what we've done ourselves as humans with this extraterrestrial technology. They say, they, don't, they can't say they're alien spacecraft because they don't know. And of course all the conspiracy no. theorists are jumping up and down saying, oh yeah, they know they're alien spacecraft. Oh, hang on, hang on, I never used the word, alien spacecraft. Now, first of all, UFO just means unidentified flying object. I, I don't have a problem with that. I'm, I don't assert that something is an alien spacecraft. An alien spacecraft is a specific definition. It refers to a spacecraft built by a non-human intelligence from somewhere off the Earth. If I say something, I mean, I actually do think at least some UFOs are that. But I'm not, it's not an a priori kind of, it's not an a priori conclusion I'm jumping to groundlessly. I will only make that assertion if I believe there's evidence and good reason for thinking that is the case. If if you are picked up by some kind of vehicle and, it, and there are aliens inside it and they say they come from Zeta Reticuli, as what happened with Betty and Barney Hill, then there's good reason. It's, it's perfectly reasonable to say I was aboard an alien spacecraft because they flew from Zeta Reticuli. It's obviously a vehicle. These these people are these creatures are aliens. Ergo, it's an alien spacecraft. But to say conspiracy theorists jump up and down and say no no it was an alien spacecraft it's an alien spacecraft no, I don't say that. Maybe some other conspiracy theorists do, but we're not, we're not, uh, we're not a um, united front on this particular matter, Steve. Craft. Well, you know, unless they've actually landed and they've communicated with an alien face to face, they don't know. Well, oh, you, you took the words right out of my mouth, Steve. Maybe I should have pre-watched this video, but this is exactly what. You're just making the same point I am now. Um, this is exactly what many UFO witnesses have said. They may very well suspect strongly that they're alien spacecraft, but they don't know. Um, and what you've got to bear in mind is that a lot of this historical stuff that, that you get from these conspiracy theorists is, uh, you know, Roswell is nonsense. Oh, okay. There are no aliens. No, uh, please, Steve. Watch my. I know you've made a reply video to me, to me since about this, which I haven't seen yet because I haven't had time. But I've done a I've done a reply video to Steve Mumbling on the Roswell incident, and he's wrong about this. It was real, and it was something extraterrestrial. Aliens, in, no aliens being stored anywhere. There are no um, there there is no recovered wreckage from this, alien space. There is aliens are being stored somewhere. They do have recovered wreckage. Craft anywhere. Although this latest thing suggests that you know Bigelow Aerospace might have some bits and pieces of these things, but oh uh, well, Bob Bigelow, see, like I mean. The very fact that he was involved makes me wonder how whether this was how half-hearted this was. I mean, this whole thing with Tom DeLonge as well. I mean, it's it's a bit dodgy. I mean, the more I look at it, the more dodgy it looks. But um, Bob Bigelow apparently all he was involved in, and I explained I explained on a previous video why I think it is plausible that Bigelow Aerospace might be involved in this. 
um, would have been very, very, he wouldn't have been shown any sort, there wouldn't be any saucers in his hangar, to quote Nick Pope, but he, there might have been small pieces of metal. That's the most that he would have kept on his premises. Um, but I, I do wonder, I'm starting to wonder a bit whether this is some kind of diversion, the whole thing. Um, including Bob, uh, including not, I don't think Bob Bigelow would deliberately divert people, but it's possible the government would using him, using Tom DeLong, things like that. I'll let him carry on. I very much doubt that, to be perfectly honest. I, I would have to, um, I would have to see that to believe it. Well, some people, uh, some people have seen these things, you see, and it's, you know, it, it's possible when you're driving a. Through the through the outback one day, you know, on the way to the Billabong or whatever it is you do, you Australians, you know, have a kangaroo burger and a and a beer on the barbie. Okay, you might not get there. Well, you might turn up there four hours late when everyone else is just drunk and are lying around in the sun. Actually, come to think of it, Australians do that all the time anyway, so it's a bad example. But you know, you may turn for whatever, well, however you Australians judge, you know, being late for a party, you might actually turn up. Late, and they'll say, they'll say, Steve, where have you been? We've been waiting for you. And he says, well, I, what time is it? And they say, it's almost midnight. And he's going, but it's only, a, it's only a half hour drive from my house. What's going on? And then you, your memories might come back and you'll realise that you were taken. You were taken by some kind of flying saucer that swooped down and lifted you off the road. You and maybe your car as well altogether. I'm serious. These things have happened. They have literally happened. There's a good example from Scotland a couple of years ago, actually. It's been very well researched. These things do happen. I'm serious. And you might experience that one day yourself. Um, and uh, it looks like the, the sort of information trail on that has dried up. You know, there's, there, there doesn't appear to be any more uh, revelations with regard to, you know, pictures of anything that Bigelow might have. Um, well, I mean, he didn't have much information to begin with, did he? I mean, Bob Bigelow is a, is a great guy. He's, he's, he's this rich philanthropist who funds these paranormal investigations he did a fantastic job with you know with the skinwalker ranch uh, project and things like that but i mean he he'll be told what he needs to be told and he'll be shown what he needs to be shown the moment he enters into, into service as a government contractor you know he won't when when he when he signs that contract it will not give him immediate access to everything in the government he, they want to use him they want to employ him but I mean, he, 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 there's a limit on how much he'll be shown. Personally, you know, Bigelow made his money with real estate. Real estate, as we all know, people involved in real estate make their money from bullshit. We've been so, through that, Steve. You know, I, I personally, I wouldn't trust a, uh, someone, a, a real estate guy or an ex-real estate guy, as far as I could throw them. <laughs> Speaking of the bloke who almost burnt his house down the other day. So, I'd have to see that to believe it. Um, so, whilst there is a choice... Oh, there's something on my... Oh, sorry, I thought it was a mark on my monitor, but it's actually some... I think it's some bird poo on Steve's windscreen, because the camera is facing out the front of the car. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Steve, Steve, clean your windscreen. Whilst they have a choice, no alien, no alien spacecraft has landed anywhere, the crew hasn't been interviewed by CNN. You know, whilst that hasn't happened, you will never, ever get disclosure. People talk about clean... He's probably right, actually. I mean, unless unless Steve Bassett is right, and we do have a chance, I really hope so. so you know, if Hillary Clinton was going to dis disclose in her second term, <laughs> that's an obvious vote buyer, isn't it? So all, all the all the people that are involved in in, in the UFO phenomena are, are going to have to vote her in in the first place. And they're going to have to vote her in for a second term. Well, look, it's it's funny you should say that, you know, because this is where Steve Bassett, I think, made a big mistake. Um, he, he was he came on he came on my radio show. I mean, I pl I actually played a couple of my radio interviews with him on 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 YouTube on Panama TV. He was convinced that Hillary Clinton was going to be the disclosure president. I mean, I, I did I actually did a video called "What About Trump?" Um, UFO disclosure 2017. What about Trump? <coughs> or 2016? I can't remember which one it was. But Steve was convinced Hillary Clinton was going to be the disclosure president because she had John Podesta working with her who was in very very keen on the idea of disclosure he made several speeches saying about how it was important that we have UFO disclosure she herself now Podesta was running her campaign her electoral campaign Hillary herself 
spoke about UFOs on several occasions, most famously at the New Hampshire primaries, where she mentioned it. Now, well, this is several issues here. It, well, first is, like, as you've just said, <coughs> the idea of UFOs is now so popular, maybe it could be that some politicians are actually considering us as an entire sector of the electorate that they have to appeal to. But Steve was talking about other reasons why he thought Hillary would be involved, because he, Hillary Clinton and her husband Bill were involved with the Rockefeller Initiative, which led to the disclosure petition, etc., etc. It's a long story, that. Now, I, my purpose, I mean, I didn't want to, uh, Steve, I love Steve, he's a great guy, and I just didn't want to burst his bubble, but I did have to say, you know, point out the fact that of Hillary's connections to various things, people such as George Soros, her, her connections to all kinds of international globalist bodies, which lead me to just see her as just another establishment hack. Now, S Steve Bassett has an extremely dim view of Donald Trump. And he, he, he and Grant Cameron, when Trump was elected, they basically, they basically went, they, they, they went as a period of brief depression. I mean, Grant Cameron was on suicide watch. He really was. I mean, he, he wrote this, I, I talked about it in a previous video. He wrote this 60,000 word lament just saying how awful things were and how we were all, you know, we were all doomed because Trump was now president. Steve's always saying horrible things about Donald Trump. But there's this kind of anti-Trump culture in the United States at the moment, which comes out in many, many different ways. It's promoted by the media. I took a very different view. I actually think Trump is far more likely to be the disclosure president than any other president we've had since Kennedy. And I explain why in my video, UFO Disclosure 2017, What About Trump? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to repeat the points I made um, in this video. I can't keep repeating myself in the, on this channel, but do watch that. I'll, well, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put a link in the description box to my most recent, my most recent UFO Disclosure video. But you can follow that. In that one, there are, there's links to the previous one after that, the previous one after that. And you can find whichever one you want simply by going through these previous links in the description boxes of the various videos. Okay, so I'll just continue now. It's just, it's, it's a con. It's ridiculous. Bill Clinton said... No, it's not a con. It's not a con. I should point out, actually, you know, the reasons why I think Trump is... Yeah, Trump is not an establishment candidate, basically, I should say. So I've lost my... I'll, I'll, I'll recap slide. I'll, I'll just rewind a little bit. I don't want to cut... I don't want to, like, twist Steve's words, so I'll just let him start again. People that are involved in, in, in the UFO phenomenon are, are going to have to vote her in in the first place, and they're going to have to vote her in for a second term. It's just, it's, it's a con. It's ridiculous. Bill Clinton said the same thing. When he got in there, he, he said he did look. He got people... Well, you just made the point I have, Steve, about how, you know, you, the UFO... UFO belief now is something that, that politicians have to appeal to because we're an entire sector of the electorate. You know, it's like, well, how are we going to get the black people to vote for us? How are we going to get women to vote for us? How are we going to get old people to vote for us? How are we going to get veterans and, and, and people like that, the blue-collar workers, and all these other different people that politicians want to just scoop as many up as they can? They're going to have to add UFO to believers to that list now. But that is a good sign. It shows how popular the idea of UFOs are becoming. ...to look and he found nothing. So, you know... Who found nothing? Sorry. Oh, it's, um, no, 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 hang on. Hang on, hang on. Let me just let him repeat himself. Look, he got people to look and he found nothing. Yeah, you're talking about Ryan from Belfast. You asked me, did an alien spaceship crash in Roswell? Well, Ryan, uh, they haven't told me if that's the case, but I'd like to know too. He said, cl said Clinton. And he did make this speech about this letter he got from this 11-year-old boy called Ryan who lives in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Um... Now, Steve thinks that's basically, um, he's making a disclaimer now because he's thinking about the, the post-disclosure world and he, he, he might end up in court. So basically, he's, he's basically signalling his, his innocence. However, I think there's a good reason to believe that Clinton actually was not, um, was actually not um, actually briefed into the UFO disclosure issue for several reasons. His, his background is basically, uh, he's non-military. He's... Um, got a bit of a he's, he was a bit of a basically he's a bit of a slob and a playboy and somebody who the actual military industrial complex does not trust very much i don't think um timothy good made this point too about the personality of bill clinton the fact that he is i was going to say i mean there's a lot of presidents who are very very degenerate but clinton seemed to be excessively so to the point where it couldn't even be covered up um 
and for this reason, he's in fact, um, he's not he's not alone. I'm not saying he was exceptionally. Um, there were others. I mean, Lyndon Johnson was also one of these people. But basically, these were sort of like um, these were sort of like armchair presidents or slob presidents. They that basically the real powers that be didn't take seriously. Um, so Clinton, um, when Clinton said to that, when he made that speech about Roswell, and he said something similar more, much more recently on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Um, if you remember, I covered that actually when Kimmel asked him about this. Um, I think he me he meant it. I think he was telling the truth. He has not. He doesn't know about all this. Why should he? Or just because he's a president, he'll need. He'll be told what he needed to know as much as I was in the NHS. There's no difference. Just because he's in a position of apparent political power doesn't mean he has any real political power. So you know, it's. Um, I think there's an awful lot of stories out there that have got exaggerated out of all proportion. And uh, you know, once you start looking into it, it you, you find that, that there really isn't very much to this beyond the visual sightings and. Um, you know, air traffic controllers saying they see them on radar. Uh, pilots see them. Uh, you might get some infrared gun camera footage, but I mean, even the thing from the F-18s, they said there was this big thing roiling under the water. It was like smoke coming up or steam coming up, and then this thing come up out of the water and it demonstrated these really amazing uh, capabilities. But supposing it was a Russian submarine, supposing the Russians have got something that could, uh, with some sort of exotic propulsion, and they were just trying it out to see if the, if, if the if it could evade the F-18s. I, I'm, it's pretty incredible. If they had that kind of technology, then I think um, they'd have probably they probably have taken over the world by now. Some maybe that would have been a bloody good thing. <laughs> but no, um, the, you, this is the point. You're, you're making an interesting point here, actually that a sufficiently, sufficiently advanced human technology might be indistinguishable from extraterrestrial technology. And, um, well, that's actually true up to a point. However, for practical purposes, if you see, like, for instance, like you mentioned a submarine, well, this was, this was, if this was a submarine, it was, not, it was not a submarine that had some kind of, Easter propulsion system, which is sometimes sometimes theorized. There's people who say they have magnetic hydrodynamic drives, which is sort of like a jet engine for the water, you know, which is very, very quiet. It means these things can't be picked up on sonar. Um, that is, that's a reasonable, that is a reasonable piece of speculation. But you're talking about something that can, a submarine that can fly out of the air and then loop the loop a dozen times at a thousand miles an hour and shoot off into space. No, no, that's, you, you've got to then consider that perhaps this is not man-made. I mean, you mentioned what, what, what they're talking about here has actually been witnessed by other people. You said there's, nah, there's nothing to see apart from a few pieces of blips on radar and stuff, whatever it was you just said, Steve. But um, I don't, I'm not misquoting you. I'm just, I can't remember your exact words. I'm paraphrasing. But Bill Cooper, um, author of Behold a Pale Horse, was inspired to write the book, partly because of an incident that he experienced when he was in the U.S. Navy. He was on the, on the bridge of USS Tiru, um, and was on lookout duty, and he saw something which he described as the size of an aircraft carrier, a disc-shaped object, come out of the water, come out of the water at the sea in the Pacific Ocean, and fly off. <clears throat> and apparently, it went back into the water afterwards, and did that several times. And when he got when he got back to Pearl Harbor, the, where the submarine was based, he was interrogated by some you know dark suits, dark suited men who basically said, "What did you see, sailor?" Oh, I saw this. No, you didn't see anything. And they were really rough with him, swearing him to silence. There's many, many people have these stories, Steve. Many, many people. You just don't know. So you can't say don't that know. was definitely an alien. I mean, the pilot, you know, the pilot said that in his opinion, he didn't think it was built here. But, you know, he's a pilot. He drives aeroplanes. He's... Yeah, well, I just, sorry. Um, maybe I should have pre-watched this. But I just explained, you know, how that's not the, that's, you can sometimes, it's reasonable to speculate otherwise, I think, Steve. It's just his opinion. That's it. Um, so, and the other thing too, you've got to bear in mind is that uh, it happened well, 13 years ago, so he would have been a lot younger. And the guys are probably a little bit more prone to exaggeration. Yeah, but he's he's saying it now. The, the interview was recent. Um, I think I 
I've said on a previous video, supposedly they've been tracking these things for two weeks. Well, you know, <laughs> you know if, you've, if you've got the most powerful military in the world and something is invading your airspace and it's demonstrating capabilities beyond what you think you can develop yourself, then why are you going to wait two weeks to go and see if you can get a look at it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean I'm not a... I was, uh, I actually was only in the Royal Navy for four months, but you know, you, naval tactics, I mean, you, you, there may be all kinds of reasons why they didn't want an aerial interception too soon. Maybe it was not possible, maybe it was out of range, maybe they didn't have the resources. It's, it's a, it, actually, Stephen, it is a good question you're asking, and it deserves an answer. It's quite, it's quite a reasonable question you're asking about that. Why did they wait two weeks? I will think I'll watch, hey, where is that video of yours? Let's have a look. Right, um, let's go through these videos of yours. Here we go. 2004 Nimitz aircraft UFO. I'll watch that. I'll watch that one as well. Okay, I'll watch that one too. In a minute, I'll do. I'll finish this one and I'll watch that one before I go into the last one that I was going to talk about. That doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. The whole story is a bit popular. So when it comes to UFO disclosure. Forget all these disclosure clowns that you see on, on the internet, you know. I suppose I'm one of them, aren't I, Steve? Greer and you know, all these other bloody idiots Greer. are just clueless. They haven't got any more of a clue about it than you have. Well, Greer, I, I actually... I, I do w watch him, I listen to him. I mean, I've talked about this on previous videos, um, about the man himself, but I... I don't go along with everything he does or says, and I don't necessarily, I don't trust him. Um, I hold him in far less esteem than I do Stephen Bassett. Um, but you know, I, I'm not sure what's, what's going on. No. And in fact, they're, 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 they're prone to the embellishment for cash. That is their living, you know, they make money out of all this disclosure rubbish. I mean, Greer's been saying he's going to disclose something for the last 20 years, and he have not seen him disclose anything at all yet. It, well, that's a good point. I mean, but making money. I mean, Greer does make money. I mean, I know, as I explained, that when I went to see his show in London, I was quite shocked by how much I was charged. Um, he does have a, quite a budget. Now, Steve Bassett lives in a bloody car. Steve's homeless. He basically lives in his car. Have you seen that documentary? I talked about it on a previous video about Steve Bassett. There was this, this young um, filmmaking student, this young media studies student, did a a 15 minute documentary on Steve's life. He, li he's, he's, he lives in a car. He sleeps on the reclined seat of his car. He washes in public toilets. You know, he has his jacket hanging up in the car beside him on, on, a, on, a, on a coat hanger in the car. You know, it's the same, it's like Ian R. Crane, he's exactly the same. Steve was, a, Steve was on the way to a career as a pro tennis player where he could have earned millions winning Wimbledon. You know, he gave that up. It, this is the richest to rag story. Exactly the same with David Icke. You know, people say, David Icke's in it for the money. Well, the Communist Party didn't take power last night. I mean, David's allowed to earn a living. Um, but the truth of the matter is, he gave up a career in TV to do this. He could have been, you know, you know how much those guys get paid. See, I, I, if you're suggesting that this is just an industry of some kind, you're completely wrong. So, uh, there we go. So, as far as UFO disclosure goes, it will never, ever happen. Just remember this, it will it never, ever happen whilst they have a choice. While it's always just a UFO, it's something in a gun camera, it's something on radar, it's something somebody's seen, something fighter planes have played with, they're never going to say it's an alien spacecraft. They may strongly suspect it is, but they're never, ever going to say it is. The only way they'll ever disclose is when the aliens disclose themselves. It's a... well, honestly, I hope that happens. I really do. Because come on, aliens, come on, man, get get out of your heads and stop. Just show us, show, you know, land. Because obviously you're hiding from us. Don't stop it. Simple as that. So... As Stefan Molyneux says, aliens are shitheads. So every anybody out there waiting for disclosure, um, you're wasting your time. Just just forget about it. And then one day it'll be on the news. But keep pushing and poking and pushing and poking, and um, you know nothing's ever going to happen because none of them have anything to disclose. Oh, they do. The governments have 
everything to disclose. They do have decisive evidence, Steve. They have decisive forensic evidence. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Physical evidence that these things are real. That is the that is the boring truth of the matter. Nobody has any aliens. Nobody has any alien spacecraft. You're after your boring truth bravery medal again, aren't you? Just like you were in the previous video. Not, you know, maybe you deserve one. I'll, I'll see if I can get one made up and sent to you. Nobody has any bits of alien spacecraft. Yes, yes they do. They do, I swear. Maybe little metal slivers that Bob Bigelow has been allowed to see, which are far less, um, far less convincing. You know, they could be something else. But there are, there is a saucer in a hangar. It's all rubbish. Well, there you go. That's my two bobs worth on, uh, on disclosure. Um, I'll, uh, I'll catch you next time. Right. Okay. So let's let's check out Steve's other video. I've got, I've got a third video I want to see, but let's just check out this one. Okay, now this is a bit old video. Okay, I'll just add this to the link to my list actually, because before I forget, because I'll forget to do this later. So you, I hope you don't mind if I just. I can't be bothered to pause the. I'm afraid I can't be bothered to pause the uh, camera. Oh okay. god! It's just I'm just adding this to the sort of notes I've got to to do. Okay, but let's just um, let's just. All right, we'll just go through uh, through this now. Video. Um from the uh, from the couple of fighter pilots, well, this is partic one particular aircraft that uh, from the Nimitz that chased chased the UFO back in 2004. Now I did a video about well, this, this the is, other day. Sorry, but I did. This is called 2004 Nimitz aircraft UFO encounter story has some holes. Didn't show any of the, the footage. This is from um, this is just a little bit from uh, Secure Team. Um, I like Secure uh, Team. Actually. It shows the uh, shows the pilot. Um, I quite like this channel, by the way. Secure team. Good for you, mate. Up, so do I. Puts up some very interesting stuff, uh, Tyler. So uh, if you get to see this, Tyler, uh, thanks and keep it up, mate. It's interesting stuff. Now, um, the pilot actually gives a narrative of, of what's going on here. Now, this picture is uh, now, this vision is infrared. Okay, infrared from the aircraft. It's a lot to take in, and while we're on the subject of that, I he's just, now I don't know how much you can hear now. He's actually playing a video from Secure Team, which is about all this sort of things. You can hear the voice of um, what's his name, the Tyler, the guy who does it, um, and um, so you. But I, I don't know how much of this you can hear. If I hear anything interesting, I'll, I'll repeat it to you. Otherwise, I might just forward wind. I have some real news for you guys. Which is that one of the okay, pilots of a real here in the talk. So I'm going to forward wind this bit. No. No, and no, you know, you've probably heard all this already. I'm going to assume you've heard all this already. So to save time, I'm just going to forward wind it. Spears to where Steve starts start talking. Off in <clears throat> yeah. Disappears. What would you ask? Exhaust. Uh, one second. Yeah, so oh, he's okay, talking. Go back a bit. It is interesting. It is interesting. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. I just I forward wound a bit. It's just basically the news. It's basically the the uh, the news spot for this whole thing that came out, where you see the pilot being interviewed, you see uh, all that kind of thing, and you hear the Hugh Elizondo's voice and stuff like that. Okay. So now Steve's going to begin his commentary. Things of anything former In a moment. Mm, that's that's that is interesting because we're looking at it in the we're actually looking at the infrared footage, and uh, there is no you know heat plume anywhere. Mm. So that is interesting. And this thing came from a dead hover over the water, just kind of moving around to a. He's talking about that. Up to about twelve thousand feet to rapidly accelerating away in a climb, and in less than two seconds it was gone. And you figure you're talking fifty miles of visibility, and you can. Yeah, so he's talking about um, 50 miles of visibility, so you can actually mm. physically see this thing. They didn't have to use the infrared to uh, to see it. Sounds they could, like Steve. They could see it with their eyes. So if it was, you know, if it were, if it was visible in the normal optical spectrum, why isn't there any video footage of it? Right. Well, that's a good question. Um, the reason, well, it could be that um, they don't want actually to declassify it. It's possible. What was any taken? I mean, did did the aircraft have that capability? First of all, or, or did it just or did it just have the infrared camera? I don't know. I'm not an expert on these aircraft. 
Um, then again, it's possible they're holding the government are holding back the visual footage for whatever reason. And why, what that reason would be, is, is interesting to speculate on. I just think, I hope Steve didn't bring his co begin his commentary earlier. Steve, if you actually, I'm at the five minute point in your video, if you actually begun your commentary earlier and I just skipped through it, I'm sorry about that. I'll go back later and <clears throat> check it out and I might add a bit more to this video if that's the case. You know, why isn't there just ordinary video um, from any of the cameras on these aircraft showing this white tic tac, this 45 foot white tic tac? Why, why are we seeing a rather fuzzy infrared image? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. We see an object that size easily out to 10 miles and it just disappeared in seconds. I mean, what would be the effects on a human pilot of the G-forces involved in that altitude change? You're talking about the G-forces uh, on well, the tic-tac. The, would be bad. the, tic -tac. the acceleration of the object. That's what it, right. Uh, yeah, so the other thing too is, is it's, this happened in 2004, it's 2017 now, just about, it's going to be 2018 very shortly. So, we, you know, we're talking nearly 14 years ago, this guy's, this guy's recalling a, 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 an incident from 14 years ago. So, you know, the fact that he's a pilot doesn't necessarily mean that um, it's, uh, uh, you, you can take it at face value. I mean, uh, Gordon Cooper, the astronaut, told a story about a, a flying saucer that came in and landed, you know, the landing gear came out and the people came out and he saw that and all that sort of stuff and uh, apparently that was a complete, uh, a complete fabrication. He did. Was it? Actually um, been told that story and he wrote himself into it. Oh, right, is that true? So you've got to be a bit careful, you know, with, uh, with regard to people that, uh, even if they're... In now, the, oh, well, the Gordon Cooper thing, I'm not familiar with what you said, but to stick to topics, um... It's, it may have happened 14 years ago, but it would have been something this pilot would remember very well, I'm sure. It would be something that would stick in his mind. Um, and he may even may have made private notes about it. In, you know, they do hold positions that you think might give them um, significant credibility. Especially over time, you know, the stories may get um, enhanced, but... Credibility? Who's going to gain credibility from this? Uh, I'd certainly be asking you know two questions. One, why is there no optical video footage of this thing? Yeah, good question. And two, um, I don't know if this guy actually said it. He said he saw a disturbance of the water, but I read that um, there was some sort of huge thing just under the under the surface with the roiling steam and smoke coming out of it. And we don't hear any more about that. So what happened to that? Well, that's a good point. I mean, uh, that, that is an important piece of evidence, if that's the case. Um, so it's an interesting story, but... Um, I think there's still problems with it. The, well, I just, honestly, I wanted to fly it. It's the pilot <laughs> yeah, speaking uh, again now. Uh, you know, there's, you know, talking to some physicists, they don't think the human body could handle that kind of force. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't, body sound, couldn't doesn't like the human body could handle so the G-forces. Mm, okay, well, Bob would be talking to physicists about what sort of G-force the human body could take. Um, surely you want to be talking to some physicians. You know, physicists might be able to... <laughs> so well, well, both could actually be, be useful, I think, both. I'll give an opinion how to, as, as to how this thing might be propelled, but... Um... Come and think of it, I mean, in the US Air Force there are doctors who deal with this sort of thing, because, you see, when they're designing aircraft and they're training pilots, they have to make these judgments, because pilots also have to endure enormous G-forces. And they go through they go through a simulator where they spin you around. You get a centrifugal effect to simulate high levels of g-force, and um, some of the pilots pass out and they can and then they're dropped from the program, you know, because they can they're not they they can't keep their heads together when they um, when they're in that particular position. But it's often doctors who are involved in this. So the U.S. Air Force actually has its own facilities for making these kinds of judgments, Steve. And this pilot would have had contact with these people. I wouldn't have thought physicist would be the people that uh, you'd be talking to about what the human body could take. Well, that's true, I know, but but a physicist would tell you what would first tell you exactly what kind of inertia that object would be experiencing, and then you could take it to a physician, who would then tell you, well, what what would happen if there was a, hypothetically a pilot, a human pilot within that machine. And what do you think this was? I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we... He's saying what he... But the pilot is now saying that he believes it's not of this Earth. When we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. 
well, he he would know. I mean, he he knows aircraft. He can recognise aircraft. He can judge distance. He's a pilot. This guy. He's a U.S. Navy combat pilot. Judge distance. Oh, assess targets, things like that. When presumably you express that belief to your superiors, what did they say? Well, actually, we we cut a lot of. See, the other thing too is this display. It's showing sort of minus two degrees. There's no, there's no variation on that at all. Yeah, someone else has made this point. Now, if you remember the actual display, um, I'll just show it you quickly. The actual. Oh, I can't. I can't do it right now. Sorry. Um, and I've got this trapped. One moment. That there, that display. If you remember, there was a bit of a fuss about that because, whoops, um, there was a, there was a bit of fuss about that because um, some people were saying, well, you know, it looks as if the the, the plane's just spinning in circles because um, it was assumed because you see a cloudscape scrolling beneath from left to right. And you assume you assume the gun camera is actually facing forward, but is it? And that, that was a bit of a conundrum there. So you know, he's flying in an anti-clockwise circle without any kind of variation in sort of pitch or yaw or anything uh, by the look of it. Um, obviously I'm not familiar with looking at these displays but just looking at that readout, looking at the angle of the aircraft, that's probably more than two degrees. So, quite so it was banking sharply, yeah. What that means um, I don't know but there doesn't seem to be anything changing on that. This was pointing, maybe it's pointing sideways, I don't know, I mean, you can't tell, I'm not familiar with these displays, but the, there is, there's um, telemetry actually written on the displays, so you can actually, see, you can maybe judge for yourself if you're familiar with these kinds of, these kinds of images. On that display, does there? Mm. Apart from the, the fact that the, um, the background is moving, and it seems to be that, uh, again, he's travelling in an anti-clockwise direction. Brief getting back to the boat, uh, it, and it got passed off as an event that no one could explain. Now keep in mind they have been tracking these the, um, prior to us seeing I should point out that... Yeah, so they've been tracking these objects for two weeks mm. prior to the... Uh, the actual clip that was just... I've shaved. He's going to talk about how they're tracking them. But, um... The actual clip that was released, the infrared footage of the Tic Tac craft, or whatever it was, it's actually quite short. It's, it's, I think it's less than a minute. I'm seeing it. We'll okay, go back slightly. Yeah. Bit... Mm. In tracking these objects for two weeks prior to them seeing it. Again, okay, that's a bit odd, I think. You know, because if you've got machines, what well, something you suspect is a machine, it's a vehicle, or vehicles that are demonstrating, you know, these um, these terrific um, uh, beyond our capability type uh, manoeuvres. Why, why, why are you not going to? Why are you just going to say, oh well, you know, I've been tracking them for two weeks. Why aren't you going to send something after the first couple of days to uh, have a look at these things and see what they are? Why would you? You know, why would you wait two weeks? And even then, it sounds as though they they didn't go and seek these things out by design. Uh, they were vectored to it. They were they were doing something else. They were just vectored to it because they happened to pick this thing up on radar. So that maybe they were. Maybe okay. I think okay. you know there's another big hole in this story. Yeah. Well, the fact that they were actually on the the actual two, the two aircraft involved were actually on a different mission and their uh, their, their flight was diverted to to deal with this <coughs> may not necessarily be connected to the to the possibility that, that they were just. That this was just something an eventuality just emerged. It could be that back at the command centre, probably on board the aircraft carrier, they actually did suddenly decide to do something about it on the spot, and they said, "What's the nearest assets we have in that area?" And they pointed out these two aircraft. Okay, get them to go and check it out. I mean, again, I, we, you don't can't make a judgment unless I think you are quite well versed in naval strategy and general defensive strategy. I know that the U.S. has several um, systems for, for airspace invasion. It has NORAD. Um, it has all kinds of things that the Air Force do. To have. It has Air Force radar. It has like the ability to scramble aircraft to intercept unknown objects. And indeed, this has happened. Um, they do. They have pilots on standby who who get to their aircraft and get into the sky and intervene and, inter and intercept these things. But. Um, intercept these um, these strange objects and sometimes they are just aircraft that have gone off course 
Sometimes they are enemy aircraft in a wartime situation, and sometimes they are objects that we're not familiar with. However, we don't actually, until we know more about exactly what the policy is and what the strategy is in the defense of the realm from mysterious objects like this, we don't know whether it is unreasonable or not that they didn't, they didn't actually send this particular two aircraft, they may have sent others up, to actually intercept it. They, it's possible this wasn't the first in aerial interception, I should point out, but also it's possible that they, they weren't actually going to carry out an aerial interception for reasons to do with that strategy that we're not aware of. So it, it's maybe it's we shouldn't speculate too much, Steve. Doesn't sound right to me. And this was the first time that manned airplanes had been airborne uh, when the objects appeared. Oh, right, so he's... He's just confirmed this was the first time that manned aircraft were actually airborne when the obstacles appeared. Does that mean that drones were sent up beforehand? He said manned aircraft. Yeah, but this is the military, you know. They train all the time for scrambling, you know. I mean, they could be attacked at any time and they have to be at that level of preparedness. So, you know, if they, even if they're not airborne when these things are picked up, they could scramble a couple of planes and go and have a look at them. So th this doesn't make sense either. Well... I don't know, you're, you're kind of contradicting yourself here, Steve, because you were just saying, why is this the first time they've sent aircraft up? And the pilot said manned aircraft, so you were half right there. But then, they've waited two weeks, now you're saying, well, they train all the time for scrambling, so... I mean, what, what's, what, sorry, what point are you trying to make here? It's, it's sounding like, uh, this is sounding a bit contradictory. I don't think, anyway. Story to me. I, I'm not, it's not exactly clear why Vladimir Putin is more interesting than this. I think this seems like a big deal. Commander, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about it. You seem sober and believable, and I appreciate it. Why, thank you very much, Tucker. Thanks. Mm, well, you seem sober and believable. Well, he does. But I think that I think the story is interesting. Yeah, it is. Um, but there are holes, aren't there? There are questions. Oh, holes is the wrong word. There are uh, there are details that need to be cleared up. Agreed. I reckon there's uh, there are some significant holes in this story. Anyway, that's just a bit of a follow up to uh, the video I did the other day um, about this um, 2004 um, sighting by uh, military aircraft. Oh, well, I'll have to from watch that the, one uh, <laughs> from the Nimitz. If you made it this far through the video, thank you for watching. Maybe I'll catch you again. Okay, well, what video is that? Hang on. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, Hornets from the Nimitz chase a UFO. All right, I don't have time to do that one. I'm sorry, Steve. I'll have to maybe do that one another day. But I'm now going to move on to this. Um, this is the third video. When is the fake alien invasion coming? And it begins with a little clip of Miles. Oh, Miles himself. Right. I'll just go back to Here we go. Here we go. This is a, It begins with Miles in his studio. You can check these out, links in the description box, you can watch these videos. Here we are again, and uh, I'll start looking at some other channels uh, before too long. It gets, a get, it gets a bit monotonous just looking at um, this one and uh, Ben's. But um, anyway, here's... Uh, it's Mark. never monotonous looking at my channel, Steve, never. I've just remembered something, I've got to just go back and do. But no, it's never, honestly. You know, there's no, it's never monotonous, how could you? Okay, here we go. Um, let's just... Um, Okay, is, is this is something I've got to just. Here we go. All right. Now, um, here we go. This is Steve. Steve said here. Um, this is something of the National Reconnaissance. O this is a, uh, a still <laughs> from the National Reconnaissance Office. And I think it's quite funny. <laughs> I'll, I'll stop the video here actually so I remember, so I remember when to show it to you. But um, he said they've got a bit of a sense of humour, and, and it is. This is fun. This is really funny. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure look, most of the people at the NRO are innocent, and then, you know they are just having a laugh with us. But a laugh—they're taking the Mickey out of us. And they're not saying, "Well, we have, really have this technology. And we're not telling you." I've got to, I wonder if I get one of those patches. It would be a good thing to put on my jacket. Anyway, let's let's let Steve talk about Miles. And he's I'm finding him monotonous. He's finding me monotonous. Honestly, Steve. Shame on you. <coughs> Here we go. 
Charles Johnson. It looks like there is trouble in paradise. You know, the conspiracy channels seem to be at each other's throats. Oh, tell me about it. They're not all pals anymore. Mar no. Charles has just said that uh, Stephen Greer needs to get psychiatric help. Oh, uh, Stephen Greer needs psychiatric help. I don't, I, didn't, I don't. I didn't watch this video that Steve's talking about. That Miles. The, the video that where Miles is saying these things. Um, I don't have time to watch all of Miles's videos. I, I mean, some of them are really good. Some of them are less good. I try to uh, look through the, look at the content before I actually watch it and work out which ones the best ones to watch. Um, he says the same things about my videos too. But uh, um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'll. Uh, Greer doesn't. I, uh, Greer doesn't need psychiatric help. I don't think. And he's talking about Richard Hall. I'll who, go back uh, a bit. Hang on. They're not all pals anymore. A video. Steve's made an entire video here called "There's Trouble in Paradise," <coughs> which is oh dear, Trouble in Paradise. He's also made a video called "These Clowns Just Love the Conference Circuit," and it's where he's taking the Mickey out of me and what to. Well, based on the subject of a previous video I did, and he's taking the Mickey out of me. Um, but I, I'll watch the Trouble in Paradise one another day. I, I need a break from this infighting, actually. I really do. But it's actually, he's got a good point. Well, firstly, the truth movement is not paradise. But it, it, it has times when it's very co it's very cohesive and it's very fun to be involved in. <coughs> and, there's some, and you get some healthy camaraderie. And um, that seems to be, we're going through a bad patch at the moment where that is not happening in various different ways, which... <coughs> I talk about on my Marie Kay video and also is there any hope so check those videos out and the ones I've done about with Larry Warren as well my Larry my, my recent Larry Warren video from last year as well oh, Miles has just said that uh, Stephen Greer needs to get psychiatric help and he's talking about Richard Hall who uh, had a go at uh, at Miles there mm. Richard did and um, I think he was wrong to um, Richard D. Hall said all kinds of, said some nasty things about Miles, I think it was unfair. Um, but I, I've covered that on, I think I've covered that previously on her Panmo voice or her Panmo. Um, I'm going to put the link in the description box. But. So they're all, uh, they're all, they're all fooling out. I suppose there's not enough money in the pot, that's what it is. There's not enough money. Rubbish. We're not, firstly, we're not all falling out, and it's not about money in the pot. Money in the pot to go around, so they're all trying to Nonsense. all trying to convince everybody that they're the people that t you need to. Uh, you see, there's the Patreon sign there. It'll be begging going on. They're the ones you need. Well, you, you made a video about e-begging. Look, Miles is entitled to earn a living from what he does, and the the reasons for these fallouts are ones that I've talked about in previous videos, like the is there, especially the is there any hope one. It is not because it's not for this reason. It's not because. Uh, to do with it's not financially based it's nothing to do with that this is you assuming that because you have this cynical attitude towards us need to give you money to because they're the ones that are going to tell you how it is no. <laughs> no. and bringing ce5s in oh, you don't know what you're dealing with so take care oh ce5s you know connecting with um aliens with your consciousness the ce5 protocols miles and steve are talking about that's the ce5 protocols are Something that Greer does, invented, where it's a particular type of sky watching where you actually encourage aliens to come to you by carrying out some kind of ritual. And he won't tell you what that ritual is unless you pay him £5,000 up front. And um, any, any videos you make or any photographs you take, he owns the copyright of them, even if they're shot on your equipment with your film. Um, sounds like a good deal, does it? Forget it. It's rubbish. Be respectful of whatever you're dealing with. It's not dangerous because no. there's nothing to it. There's, there's there is something. Well, there is something to it. I mean, I think what Miles's point was is actually, you can attract demonic entities when you're you're carrying out these rituals, and that is actually a concern, and that is true. There are such things as demonic entities, and you can attract them. Um, I haven't watched this video which where Miles talks about it, but I've heard about it from other areas. <coughs> There's nothing to any of this bloody twaddle, you know, aliens oh, oh, it's bloody twaddle now. He's been through rubbish, he's been through bullshit, he's been through steam, a steaming pile. Now it's twaddle! Your body, or... You know, did he say demons as well? Yeah, oh, maybe, true. I don't know. It's uh, entities invading your body and your consciousness. It's rubbish. 
Yeah. I don't think it is. I mean, th there's a long this this goes back a long way, and there's a long tradition in this. It's the esoteric arts throughout the history have dealt with the possible the probabilities of demonic possession, and I myself have been involved in cases where this has actually happened to somebody. One of them is a close friend of mine, and I won't name them, but basically I spent one night in their house, and I came. I, I didn't believe them at first. I thought they were just stupid hysterics, but then I, I, I spent one night in their house, and I came out of there believing them when they said they had been psychically attacked by demonic entities. And it's this big subject, Steve, and I know you'll find it a bit incredulous, but I would look into it. Now, Miles has been looked into this in, in enormous detail. He's interviewed several people who specialised in these, such as um, such as uh, Cara St. Louis and um, what's the name of the lady um, who spoke at Exopolitics. Um, but she she specialises in the jinn. Now, the, the jinn, D-J-I-N-N, are actually a form of um, these demonic entities. They're, they're, the the jinn are it's a Middle East it's something from Middle Eastern mythology. The jinn, it's mentioned in the Quran. It's it's where we get the word genie from. It's mentioned in the Ali Baba stories. You know the genie. That's the jinn. <coughs> Rosemary Ellen Guiley. That's her name. Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Please do. I've read her a bloody book and I couldn't remember her name. Do check that out. Um, so this is a big subject, but do please look into it, Steve, and you'll find there is some reality behind it. Um, it doesn't happen. So uh, yes, it does. You know, if you if you think you if you think you're being uh, you know psychically attacked or you're being uh, you're being taken over by some sort of entity, go and get yourself some psychiatric help because you really aren't. No, no. Now I I do say to people to exhaust all possibilities. If you are suffering, if you are suffering from mental illness, yes, you need to be treated. Okay, but the the idea that anyone who's experiencing any kind of symptoms of demonic possession should it should be assumed that they're psychotic, and then they'd be shoved full of olanzapine, is wrong. It's completely wrong. It doesn't. And I know people, including the person I'm talking about, who I stayed a night in that one night in their house, who this has been done to, and it's not helped them one tiny bit, because they are demonically possessed. Yet this put this particular person actually recovered somewhat when she went to see a. She went to see a counselor, um, a, de a counselor for de of demonic possession, and she was she did undergo a very benign exorcism. Now, exorcism is a dirty word, mostly thanks to Hollywood, but you know nobody ch nobody chains you to a bed and throws holy water at you. Okay, it's not like that. It's 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 much more like a kind of form of meditation. Um, I'll I'll say more about that maybe in a future video. It's a big subject. But don't go into this uh, wide-eyed and gormless. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought that being wide-eyed and gormless was a uh, prerequisite. Very troll, Steve. For <coughs> swallowing any of this uh, codswallop. Hang on, well, it's a... Uh... Codswallop now. Now, look, it, 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 he's, it's, it is real, Steve, it is, honestly. I just want to take a little bit of bass out of this, because... Hang on, when's, um, when's the fake alien... You, is this title that's called When's the Fake Alien Invasion? The title of this video is when is the fake alien invasion coming well he hasn't actually my, neither miles nor steve has actually mentioned a fake alien invasion yet it doesn't it doesn't pick up very well on the camera um if there's too much bass in it oh steve's just adjusting take the his bass out. Fan. take the bass out of bases there we go and um Oh, uh, somebody's saying, uh, Miles, how do you feel the Richard D. Hall situation? I have a clue about Richard D. Hall's situation. I know that he slagged the hell out of me, which I thought was the biggest ego. Miles is talking about Richard D. Hall's attack on on Miles, which I thought was unfair. Um, and I told him so. I told him you know, it's, it doesn't it doesn't help what Richard did. And he had no cause to say the things he did about Miles, saying that Miles was running a circus and things like this. I mean, no. Miles has, Miles has his problems, he's made his mistake, he's made his mistakes, but uh, Richard went over the top. Mind you, he's, Richard's just one of many people who are attacking Miles now. Baloney ever. Yeah, he's, he's one of two people uh, slagging the hell out of Miles recently. I know. Uh, the one thing <coughs> you do not do is stand up on stage and say how wonderful you are and <coughs> slag off another broadcaster. Yeah. Um, oh, I think I could manage that. I know you could, Steve. You could manage that, slagging off another broadcaster on stage. 
But um, it's not professional within our community to do that, I don't think, unless unless you, you, you have some sort of evidence, okay? And simply the kind that's been brought forward by all these people who've attacked Mars, and indeed attacked me, is not, doesn't count as evidence. Uh, so that's, you just don't do it. And it's because he did that 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 broadcaster used me for uh, the, the great UFO conspiracy, because I wasn't going to be on it. Because he slagged me off, they said, well, use you, Miles. Because I was in... Oh, right, is that right? I didn't know that. Um, but anyway, I'll just point out that, um, you know, there are people... I don't like within this community. There are people I don't trust. There are people I avoid. There are people I suspect have been disinformation agents who are working for the government. Uh, and I've had some experiences where I believed at one point, a few years ago, there was a recruitment attempt made of me. But I will not ever say publicly any details of that. If you get me around a table in a pub and you get in, we're, we're having a chat over some pints. I might talk about it off the record, but no way will I ever talk about it formally because I'd be accusing people without any evidence. All right, and I don't, and I don't think that's the right thing to do. And a lot of people have been doing that lately in our community. It's not just Richard. Richard's, Richard's not actually even the worst offender. There's men, there's others who are far worse. <clears throat> in the last one on Channel Four, they didn't want me again. And uh, anyway, was, anyway, that was that. Uh, Richard E. Hall does his own work. I respect his work. Best of luck to him. That's it. Yeah. You said it was these aliens, fake aliens. I'm not quite sure where Steve's going with this video, actually. Invasion's already happening. Oh, fake alien the invasion. The fake alien invasion has happened. Sorry, <coughs> I spoke too soon. Let me go back a bit. So I don't. I haven't been pre-watching these videos, and I mean. The thing about it is, I haven't had time lately, Steve. I'm sorry. I mean, the first video I did with Roswell, I actually watched nearly all of it all the way through. Then I did the filming. But now I've been sort of watching your videos without any previews, um, which may not be the right thing to do. Maybe in future I'll do it differently. Do you say that you've seen fake alien fake alien invasions already happening? The, you mentioned the fake alien invasion, invasion has happened because of... <laughs> yeah, the fake alien invasion has happened uh, because, you know, we, every one of us can look out of the window and see the sky is full of fake alien spacecraft. Now, let, give Mars a chance to finish, Steve, because um, I think Mars is going to make a different point. Steve's saying, oh, because there's no fake, they, we don't see fake alien spacecraft in the sky, so the yeah, fake alien invasion hasn't happened yet, but maybe... I think maybe we're dealing with different definitions for fake alien invasion. People who are running the show are Nephilim. <laughs> People on the show are Nephilim. Now, uh, Nephilim, they're aliens, aren't they? So we're getting yeah. a fake alien invasion organised <coughs> by uh, real aliens. Yeah, this is... Well, yeah, well, you see, that that's actually a possibility. As paradoxical it sa as it sounds, it's possible that a fake alien invasion may be organised by real aliens. Yeah, this is just... I will explain. Beyond twaddle, isn't it, really? Beyond oh, twaddle! Good heavens. And they've disguised themselves as humans, because in 3D, the, in 3D, this 3D that we're physically in... So they're not human, they've disguised themselves as humans. So there's uh, there's there's aliens organising a fake alien yeah. attack. Now, the disguise themselves as humans things thing is, is a very, very big subject. It refers partly to the idea of the reptilians which David Icke has talked about as well as many others and indeed Steve has made a video call about David Icke and the reptilians which I will review shortly I will talk about it it's one of his early videos actually yeah he did it two years ago David Icke's lizard people I will get round to that Steve at some point um, maybe not in this video but maybe in a future video but it, it, there is a it, it, it is something I take seriously that there are people walking around today who look like people and are not people. Have you ever heard anything quite so ridiculous? Yes, Steve. Half of your videos. Aliens organising a fake alien attack. I've seen there's been a fair bit on the. I think you're you're oversimplifying this. A fake aliens involving a f fake aliens invading, involving a fake alien attack. Well, the thing about it is. If, for example, the, this world had been taken over by an extra, a malevolent extraterrestrial force involving people who were disguising themselves in human form, Steve, then um, if those 
beings who were technically are aliens decided that they were going to fake an alien invasion then wouldn't that be aliens faking an alien invasion that wouldn't there's nothing there's nothing there's nothing contradictory about that okay that is perfectly it's like a pilot's hat isn't it like a pilot's hood this um there's nothing contradictory about that okay uh, so that's the where i think we get into but what do we mean by alien invasion that's the question now there's a alien invasion is covered enormously in fiction um it's a it's a common theme of hollywood movies and these uh, hollywood movies they vary they vary enormously in um in intellectual content and um, um qu the quality of style yeah you know but um there, there's many many of them basically it means basically as it says the earth is attacked by um, by aliens, by these creatures that come down from other worlds, they come steaming down onto the earth, and they shoot. They usually they usually armed, and they're dangerous and hostile, and they start shooting people and making them vanish into thin air, and they'll turn into clouds of dust. And then usually the brave, plucky humans find some way to fight back. Now, as I've, as I've said, these these films vary enormously in technical quality. They vary enormously in intellectual content. Uh, some are very good, some are very bad, but. Um, the point is that could could it be that something like this might actually happen? If there are aliens, if there are extraterrestrials, and they haven't landed on the White House lawn yet, but they exist and they found us and they're in our airspace and they're on this planet with us, <coughs> then what if what if they do decide to turn hostile? Rather than landing on the White House lawn, they laser the White House into dust, and then they, they blow the uh, they blow the House of the Parliament into vapor. Okay, supposing that happens. It's a possibility. If they if they wanted to do it, they could do it very easily. Alternatively, there may be some benefit for the government, whether they're human or extraterrestrially occupied, extraterrestrially occupied, or interdimensional. In the case, the thing about the reptilians, which David Icke talks about, is they're not from another planet. They're from another world. They're from another universe beyond our space and time. It may be that they just for whatever reason want to actually stage a false a false flag version of one of these things. I'll let Steve finish because this is a big subject I, I covered before, but I want to um, let Steve f say a bit more. The, uh, on the internet about this fake alien attack that's coming, uh, different people have been spruiking this absolute nonsense and. Uh, oh, it's spru spruiking absolute nonsense. Steve, this this avatar you've got yourself is like Steve's like this. He's he, he looks like this sort of like detective guy, and if you've seen it, he's like this, and he's got these little round sunglasses and a big trilby house sideways and he's puffing on a pipe like this <laughs> you, you look you make yourself look so cool steve right? you, you make you make yourself look like you're the guy who gets to the bottom of anything and your word is the last word but it's not <laughs> you you you've been uh, well we've been arguing for for, for for months now in the comments sections of my videos and in case in yours so um, even a sort of like ace detective image you've got for yourself is not impervious to criticism. Anyway, um, digression over. I'll let you continue. Um, <coughs> if you're worried about a fake alien attack, don't be, because it's not going to happen. I, I am worried about it. I'm less worried than I was a few years ago, and I'll explain why in a minute, but I am still worried about it. Can you imagine the resources it would take to stage a fake alien attack? Yeah, just think about the... Uh... Um, I, I should... I think I'll go into more detail because I, I don't. I just I don't want to forget the details. Bryce Zabel. I'll just I'll go back a bit because Steve's talking about resources to fake an alien attack. Okay. Imagine. Okay. Um. Go back a bit further. Okay. Uh, Bryce Zabel spoke at the Exopolitics Leeds conference in 2011. It's one of the best conferences I've ever been to. Bryce Sable is a Hollywood screenwriter. He created the TV series Dark Skies. Not the film, the TV series. Which is about um, the Roswell incident and various things associated with that. Now, um, he was talking about the possibility, the implications of willing disclosure that I talked about earlier in this film. And he said something very interesting. He said, when disclosure comes, the, the government will tell you exactly what these sort of surveillance are. Some of them will be, we can hope that they're good aliens, in which case there could be a problem with the government's credibility that they might actually 
they'll have an awful lot of explaining to do in terms of the various issues that I just talked about, you know, the free energy cover-up, the fact that they, they sat on this for, for almost a century, and they've got to explain that, etc., etc., in environmental destruction, destruction, poverty and death that is caused by us not using this technology and using fossil fuels instead. Okay, and it's, then Bryce said this, he says, it could be that it, the disclosure will happen because we're under attack. We're under attack from hostile extraterrestrials, in which case we will need... We may need to simply forgive the government and unite behind them in order to save this planet and put the uh, put the um, the idea of reconciliation and retribution um, to one side at least temporarily while we sort out the defence of our world. And I put my hand up in Q and A and I said to him, "Is it possible, Bryce?" And I've actually spoken to him since then by email. Is it possible, Bryce, that the government might pretend the aliens are hostile? even if they're not, just so they can dig themselves out of that particular little hole. In other words, spin doctors coming in and saying, look, just say the aliens are fake, and then we won't have, we, you know, the people will not demand these explanations of us, and we will not, in a sense, the, if, you, if you pretend the aliens, sorry, I said fake, didn't I? I said fake, I meant, I meant hostile. If you pretend the aliens are hostile, you know, it solves a lot of the political credibility problems and, and the um, the revelational fallout that would happen otherwise. So is it not likely that someone in government will think of this? But then, why not go even further and actually stage a fake alien invasion in order to hammer that home? And so you could have that fake alien invasion combined with willing disclosure. And if you did so, you would not only be able to uh, solve the problems of your, your various sort of like, uh, the various sort of scandals would, would emerge from disclosure, but you might have the pretext to go even further and say, well, right, let's, we need a one world unified force to deal with this extraterrestrial threat, especially if you make it a kind of long drawn out threat. And yes, I do cover this in my books. Okay, Roswell Rising, Roswell Revealed, available at all good bookshops now. Okay, I cover this scenario in my books. Um, you could have a situation where you could have a, not not it wouldn't be just a one big Independence Day style assault, but it would be a a low level, almost guerrilla like op action by these extraterrestrials, where they 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 sink a ship one minute and shoot down an aircraft the next. They'd abduct someone and kill them and leave the body where everyone could see it, etc., etc. Maybe that would be that would probably be more effective than just an all-out bombardment by big motherships with big lasers and little green men going, <laughs> you know. Um, so that is something we've got to be concerned about. And what's more, there was distinct pos there was a distinct possibility for various reasons that I went into in a previous film, and Ian R. Crane has talked about as well that the government were actually planning to do one of these fake alien invasions at the 2012 London Olympics. And I was so concerned about this that I covered it in detail. I, I covered, I'd done several videos which I won't put in the description box. Just, just, go to the, just go to my channel and just put Olympics in the search box. You'll find it. And it's possible they actually aborted that particular false flag attempt because so many people were talking about it. There was that t-shirt, do you remember? We're ready. The Apocalympics. Do you remember the Apocalympics? Yeah. Oh, so that basically is... I wanted to get that out of the way because it was in my head and I didn't want to forget all the details. So, um, sorry to interrupt you, Steve. Let, uh, please do go on. Nonsense, and um, if you're worried about a fake alien attack, don't be, because it's not going to happen. Well, as I say, I'm not. I'm, I'm much less so now. I must admit, uh, when nothing happened, and there was a no-show in 2012 Olymp in, in the 2012 Olympics. I think I feel a lot better about it now. Can you imagine the resources it would take to stage a fake alien attack? Not really. Um, yeah, you could think about these resources. Okay, what what do you think the resources would be, Steve? Yeah, just think about the uh, the movie Independence Day. You know, you get the big ship sitting above all the major. I try not to. It's such an awful film. As I said, I feel I feel ashamed for watching the sequel all the way through. The cities of the world and all this sort of stuff. Now, how would you fake that? You know, one fifteen foot diameter flying saucer with nails sticking out of it. 
um, and a couple of people dressed up in silver suits with goldfish bowls on their head isn't <laughs> going to fool anybody, is it? No, you, you fake it. You don't have to show the actual aliens with goldfish bowls on their head. I mean, in, war, in wartime, you very often, in modern warfare, for example, you very often never actually see your enemy. It's not like in the old days of the Romans where you had to fight with swords. It's it very often, you know, in modern warfare is launching missiles over the horizon or artillery or shooting people from a distance. <clears throat> um, and the same thing goes with um, with this alien situation. You, you wouldn't necessarily have to see the aliens. It could all be long distance. Now, what you could do is <coughs> you would need some kind of craft. You would need fake alien craft. Um, these would have to be very large and intimidating. You could build these. If you had access to secret uh, free energy and anti-gravity technology, you could build fake alien and craft, which would um, you could then use it to carry out uh, various attacks on the Earth in whatever scale you wanted. It could be a huge Independence Day style thing, Independence Day style, mass invasion, single assault, where you, you'd have large craft. Now, the, the, side, the mother ships in Independence Day, of course, are so enormous, they're like miles across. You could build something like that. If you had you had access to secret government technology, you could build something that big in secret. <laughs> you probably have to build it you probably have to build it on one of the bases on one of the other planets, actually one of the secret space program bases, because there's probably nowhere on Earth you could build something that big secretly. You'd have to build it on Mars or the Moon <clears throat> and then fly it down onto Earth. And it would actually be good because you wouldn't have to get it off the Earth secretly either. You fly it down onto the Earth, and it would be exactly like an alien invasion. So that's what you could do. Alternatively, you could have smaller, lower, lower key events. You know, the odd, the odd attack on various cities, the bombardments, things like that. I mean, I don't, want to, I don't want to put a spoiler in, but you know, I do address this issue in my novels, my two recent novels, Roswell Rising and Roswell Revealed. It's also, I don't, I don't I'm not just saying that to advertise them. I'm just saying these are resources where you can actually learn about these points that I'm making. If you think it is, to pull off a, a believable fake alien invasion would be beyond the uh, capability and f the technical and financial capability of uh, the United States, Russia, China, India, and you name it, put together. Okay, no, I don't think it would be. Now we've covered, you say it's beyond their technical ability, Oh, you've covered that. You mentioned financial ability. Okay, <clears throat> so let's cover that. Now, first of all, it's not any one country doing this. Okay, you mentioned beyond the capability of China, India, United States, etc. combined. It's not one nation that's carrying out this fake alien invasion. It's the world government. It's the covert world government doing it, uh, who have access to vast amount, amount of resources, that uh, financial resources, that we don't know about, basically. I mean, I think people got this idea that you just you pay your taxes, <laughs> and those taxes go to go to the government, and the government say, "All right, then they, they, those taxes come back to you in services provided by the state, like the NHS, education, the, the, the armed forces, etc." Um, but when you actually do the mathematics, you find, firstly, that the amount of tax you're paying is far more than you think. It, it, there's lots of stealth taxes, and I explained this. In, actually, I explained this in my last video, my BBC and Mind Control one. You know, in some countries, I think the United States is actually the worst offender. Up to more than 50% of your of, of your money goes in tax. So up, more than 50% of the capital in circulation is forfeit to the state and ends up in the coffers of the state. Can you just think about how much money that is the state has? And then you have the missing the missing trillions. Remember Donald Rumsfeld on September the 10th, 2001, he announced that $3.6 trillion was missing from the Department of Defense's accounts. Well, what, did, did someone wallet fell down on the back of the radiator or something, mate? Is that it? How do you lose 3.6 trillion, not billion, trillion dollars? And the fact that, then, of course, he got away with it because the next day, September the 11th, 2001, we all, well, uh, you know what happened then. Everyone forgot about what was happening the day before. But the truth of the matter is, it's not missing, it's not lost, it is requested by the unacknowledged special access programs what's sometimes known as the black budget now Nick Cook in his in his video he talks about the billion dollar secret and in his book which is Awakening to Zero Point 
he, he, he gives an estimate of the black budget. But the thing is, the black budget is far higher than he claims because he is merely going along with the so-called official black budget. And that is the, the amount that is legally siphoned off the exchequer every year for the Department of Defence spending. Okay, It doesn't include that which is illeg illegally siphoned off through the process which Donald Rumsfeld talks about, which is, uh, it went missing. Okay, so that's it's just that's a massive amount of money. It's probably the biggest stockpile of money the world has ever seen, Steve. It's a massive amount. Incalculable number of trillions of dollars. Um, and then, of course, you have um, even more illegal things that the way the government makes money. Uh, for example, the US government owns shares in, for example, the Colombian cocaine cartels and through various other um, organi organized criminal activities. They have a massive stake in organized crime. I mean, we know, we, we know that Italy does this. We know that people like Silvio Berlusconi are mafia, basically they're, they're, they're mafia godfathers, okay? But it's not just Italy, it's a lot of other countries too earn money through organized crime. It's a, a lot of the UFO a lot of the UFO back engineering project at Area 51 that Bob Lazar talks about, I mean, a lot of, he's not the only one, whether he's, re, I, I'm still not sure whether he's telling the truth or not. A lot of that is funded by the deaths of young children or, or young teenagers and young men from drug addiction in the United States because the, the cartels that provide the crack cocaine to young men and women, well, the, the money is being taken by the government and spent on these programs. It's extremely tragic and very, very enraging thing to consider. Um, but basically, um, that that addresses the financial point you make. It it was a good. It's a good point, and I've, um, I'm glad I've covered it. Not possible. It is possible. And you don't have to worry about a real alien invasion either, because if aliens wanted to take this planet, they would just take it. Yeah. They would do it biologically, they'd spray something in the atmosphere, we'd all be dead within two or three days, no one would know what hit us. That's true, actually. And I mean, I actually I'm not particularly worried about a real alien invasion. I'm less worried about a real alien invasion than a fake one. Because basically, extraterrestrials, I mean, technically they could turn nasty on us for some reason, but they haven't yet, and extraterrestrials, aliens, flying saucers, etc., have been here... Well, for, for a while, you try to find a beginning of it. They go back all through history. They didn't begin in the 1940s, when people started watching science fiction movies in the cinema. Um, people have been reporting UFO sightings for as long as they can do so without being burned at the stake for being witches. There are reports of alien abduction experiences going back centuries, millennia. We, we used to call them different things. We used to call them being spirited away by the fairies. We used to call them being taken by trolls. And um, and things like and goblins and things like that. We Rip Van Winkle being taken away by by f when he went to sleep in a fairy circle, and he had missing time as well. Um, things like that. And I mean, the the oldest UFO encounter, the US, the US, what the oldest UFO sightings report I can think of is probably the narrator of the Book of Ezekiel in the Bible, which was written at least two thousand years ago, and it talks about what. A man who had an encounter with what we would today call a UFO. Um, it's <coughs> so the very fact that UFOs and aliens have been around with us for so long, they've been a part of our existence and they've been alongside us and among us since prehistoric times. The very fact that we've survived this long without them invading us and taking us taking us over means that they're unlikely to uh, alter that policy any more and the government are likely to alter theirs. So I'm not worried about real alien invasion at all. <laughs> Virtually not at all. Um, there's far more important things to worry about. Fake alien invasion, like I said, I think it's a trick they might not use now. Um, maybe too late for that from their point of view. I think they were, if they were going to do it, they'd have done it in London in 2012. <coughs> and uh, they, there'd be absolutely no point in them coming here and fighting us on our, on our terms. Yeah. You know, we're never ever going to be involved in a shooting war with an alien species. It's just never going to. I did think it was a bit dark because, in Independence Day, which is a really bad film, it's awful. It is, it is shallow. It is, it is monolithic, but monolithically um, anti-intellectual. It is. It's basically. Uh, 
it's junk food for thought. Um, it's you see like these dog fights between human aircraft and these alien things. And you think to yourself, well, why why are they doing that? Why are they sending these little flying saucers out to get shot down? They have these lasers that can blow up entire cities. You see, it was done for effect, obviously I know that, but um it is Steve's right there, he's absolutely right. <clears throat> Um, they just uh, they just wipe us out biologically uh, very quickly mm. and, uh, and move in no, th without a shot being fired. That's what would happen. So nobody needs to worry about a fake alien invasion. That is just beyond twaddle. Yeah, the, fake, spruik by people. the fake alien invasion, as I explained, is a real possibility and it is a real threat we need to consider. The, the important thing is if we are considering it, if enough people are considering that there might be a fake alien invasion, then if it happens, hopefully enough of them will take a step back and they'll think, who's really doing this? And the moment that happens, it won't work because these things, just like 9 11, they rely on people believing the official story. It's essentially a psychological attack. <clears throat> people that want to make money out of, I don't know, selling these movies that's revealing all these secrets that are absolute garbage. Garbage. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, you, you're never going to see a real alien invasion. So you no, know, you just, just get any kind of alien invasion right out of your head. Do yourself a favour. You know, just relax. <laughs> uh, because I am trying to relax, Steve. I mean, I. You see, oh, this is why I have to take time out sometimes and have a laugh because it would. I would. I'd probably end up committing suicide if I didn't do that. It's a defence mechanism, and I do. I do, honestly. I take time out and I, I relax. It's, um, it's, uh, you, you're never going to see it. See a real alien invasion, you'll know nothing about it. Be all over before you can blink. Yeah. And uh, fake alien invasion, far too expensive and complex. No, it's neither too expensive nor complex, as I've explained. For anybody to pull off the Illuminati could do it. They 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 could they could very easily do it. Uh, realistically, so uh, just forget all about that. It's uh, it's not a fake alien invasion is not coming. Um, uh, just just get it out of your head. It's uh, absolute rubbish. People are asking, oh, we've been re we've been hearing about this fake alien invasion for years. You know, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It never comes. Well, that's true, and I mean, the. The fake alien invasion thing, like I said, I don't think they're going to use it now. I mean, it's it's actually part of the plot. To, it's a plot device in my book. I've got to stop plugging my book. <laughs> it's part of the plot devices in my my two novels, Roswell Rising, a novel of disclosure, Roswell Revealed, a world after disclosure, and indeed the third book, which I'm writing now. Um, about ten pounds, they are ten pounds on Amazon each. Um, I could bring out a box set when the third one is is ready. Okay, stop that, Ben. All right. But, yeah, it's it's probably something... It doesn't bother me very much now because I think it's a trick trick that they won't try. I think it was... The Olympics was then basically... It would be a kind of going-for-broke situation. It would be a, a basically an all-or-nothing, this would be. It would be a double or quits. That's what it would mean for them to pull this off. Because unlike 9-11, there would be no... Essentially, there would be no aftermath situation where they could say, OK, it's over now. And... And, and basically things could then, they could then move on to another stage. If they're going to pull a fake alien invasion, it's basically, it's imminentizing the eschaton, as Robert Anton Wilson would say. It's the last push for the New World Order. And if it doesn't work, there'll be no New World Order. And I don't think they're that desperate yet. I think they've clawed back a lot of ground since since their, their losses in 2016. And I think they're, they're in for the long haul. They're digging in for a siege. And a fake alien invasion would not be a part of that strategy if that's what they're doing. So I'm not worried about, I'm certainly not worried about a real alien invasion. And to us, I'm not very worried about a fake alien invasion, not since the 2012 Olympics. Because it's not going to come, because it's rubbish. It's Well, it's not rubbish. As I said, it could be done, but I don't think they're gonna do it. So I think it's, they're, not gonna, they're gonna decide not to do it. Okay, there we go. Uh, maybe I'll catch you again. Thanks for watching. Okay, Steve, well, thank you very much for those videos. And um, three videos I've replied to now. I will be doing some more. He's got some more here I want to look at. Um, 
why haven't they found MH370? David Ike's lizard people, I'll certainly do that one. Uh, me mumbling about the UFO guys, that sounds interesting. Rendlesham Forest Incident, Philadelphia Experiment, Mars Rover, not on Mars. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, no. I might touch on the black goo at some point as well. And of course you've replied to me since I did my first reply video. I've got to touch that as well. I've got to do that as well. Um, yeah. Um, mysterious and almost hexagon in Australia. And a BBC mind control. Oh, right, that's, that's another reply video he's done to me. So I am catching you up, Steve. Don't worry, this is going to be a productive conversation. I'll also cover the Simon Parks one as well. Although Simon is not here to answer for himself. But thanks very much, Steve. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, there's more to come. Don't forget, um, Cambridge. No, not Cambridge. Where's Newmarket, Suffolk. Um, oh, wait, let, me get, let me get the details. Oh, let me just get the details. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll get the details up of this. And then you will know what to do. Okay, because this is. I'm going to upload this video today, Friday. Right then, I'll be speaking at a meeting of the East Anglia UFO Group on Monday the 19th of February. The venue is the Studlands Park and Social Club, Brickfields Avenue, Newmarket, Suffolk, um, and the postcode CB87RX. The event starts at 7pm and costs £4, payable on the door. My lecture is entitled SETI and UFOs, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and UFOs. Details www.eaufo.co. Dot UK. So, if you can get to that, that'd be fantastic. Really, really good. Um, look forward to seeing you there. Definitely. Um, looks like it'll be fun. Um, I'm also speaking to the Swansea UFO Network, and I'll, I'll maybe I'll talk about that in another video. But that's that's the following Tuesday. Just go to sufon.com. S u s u f o n. Swansea UFO Network. I'm speaking there the following week. Okay, about a different subject. So, um, Steve, um, I'm sure we'll turn up. I know it's a bit of a long bus ride, but uh, Steve, get on a plane now, and you could probably get to Newmarket in time on Monday. All right. Um, so, um, hope to see you there, Steve, and anyone else. Uh, thanks for watching this video, um, and thank you, Sophie the Porter's Poet, for this wonderful headgear, which I think suits me. Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity, stop the New World Order.